making a video. I wasn't going to, but, um, yeah, fear, well, what the hell. You know, these anticontivide ones, sort of, provoked by, anyway. Just this whole conversation about, uh, the idea of pessimist versus optimist, um, kind of philosopher. Um, he doesn't defend any, I would guess, I would argue, um, any kind of rational, optimistic philosophy. But much like Nietzsche goes into the world and just critiques what he doesn't like rather than support what he does like. Um, so, um, you know, it's all depressive Stalinists <laughs> style people. Um, so I'm sure he'll find some of that in Koran, who's going to be his next victim of, you know, some sort of I shall slander you <laughs> now that you're dead. Uh, you won't take on the living, uh, but he will take on the dead. Um, which is, you know, just so obnoxious. But anyway, um, there's plenty of living people who are willing to um, defend their philosophies, um, you know, against your cliches, your... Uh, what was it this time? I should just play the little clip, but um, he, he concedes that life is, oh, yes, it's horrible, it's monstrous. And therefore, it's ludicrous, and things that are ludicrous are just funny, right? So we can all laugh, because it's ludicrous. Uh, no. Um, so, but that's a way of playing with vocabulary, right? Ludicrous doesn't sound all that harmful. It's always kind of used as a joke in, in movies. Remember that movie, Spaceballs or whatever, right? Ludicrous speed. <laughs> yeah, it was just funny. Ludicrous speed. You know, obviously if trains crashed at ludicrous speed, then it wouldn't be so funny. But, see, that's the thing. It's all funny until you're the victim, and then it's not so funny no more, um, I suppose. Uh, you know, the right kind of victim, anyway. The kind of victim that can actually understand they're a victim, you know. There are victims who can't, right? Let's let's just admit, there were slaves who were just like, Oh, I got me a good job, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, there's no nails in my bed. Uh, they gave me some water, there wasn't too many bacteriums in it. You know, there, there's people who are just all these bright sidey whatever stuff. And we have a whole bunch of those in the formation of these religious philosophies, right? You know, the, the gobbledygook of God. Um, you know, the mush of purpose. Um, and, and partly, you know, I've been doing a lot of this free will stuff lately, and it's, it's, a, good, <clears throat> it's a good conceptual starting point, you know, just to realize that you're just a, a machine, a robot. <laughs> you know, and you're just, you've been programmed by circumstances, by cartoons. I was programmed by cartoons a lot. Uh, you know, all the little stories that you banged into in your life, the little misadventures that you saw personally happen to somebody, the, the victims in the nursing home, or some other thing that you saw, and it you know, gave you a little bit of a thought. And you walked around the woods a little bit and saw a few things getting eaten alive, and, you know, maybe that gave you a little something. Saw a few... Pets die, maybe. You know, that'll do it for you, too, sometimes. Um, the brutality to the innocent and uh, the depth of how, how bad it can actually get, how bad it can be. You know, how, how long the trail of entrails, <laughs> you know, can be behind the organism struggling still. Uh, because that's what we're made to do, is just struggle still. Struggle some more. Struggle, struggle. Do some more struggling. Struggle, struggle, struggle. And pretend you're having a good time. Um, because we have this, whatever, this psychology thing, right? This, this, this mechanism we call a brain. And we like to think, I like to think, um, especially I like to, uh, that it's capable of doing logic. And it is quite capable of being a thoughtful thing, a thinking thing. But most people are using it as a scheming thing, so that's all it really is. It's just a way of engineering, you know, uh, a way of, of, of filing the key, you know, that'll open uh, whatever, her door, so you can have a peek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, something like that. It's just, a, it's just a way to get what you want, to sneak your way in. Um, and so, yes, it comes in handy for sneaking about in life. But if you're actually busy thinking about what you're doing, then you're in your, you know, compiling information. One of the pieces of information you compile is, oh, wait a minute, I'm just a program machine. And I've sort of been programmed to look in the mirror and say, yeah, I like that version. 
<laughs> you know, even if, no matter what kind of pig and what kind of trough you're troughing in, you know, uh, the, the DNA molecule will give you a positive perception of that thing um, so that you can call the others ugly, you know, by comparison, ironically. Um, there is no rationality to aesthetics and no rationality to tolerance, which is kind of funny, right? We have this, this idea of mm, suffering, uh, the negative, the harm that happens in the world, and yet we have no logical standard for how much of it's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, we just have a bunch of made-up subjective ones, and uh, we throw them back and forth like tennis balls, playing tennis with the suffering, um, debating who's, if there is such a thing as some sort of rational standard, when in a way there's no rational standard. None of it is acceptable for what we're producing, which is nothing. Nothing a dead Martian couldn't do. <laughs> you know, um, nothing of real value except satisfying some mm, programmed urge, you know, some, oh, I need some of that, I need to do a little of that, I need to rub my, on her, I need the, you know, and that's all it is, just to, you need your oxygen, you need your food, you need your little adventures in ego gratification, and that's all you are, a little program machine. And so, yes, it's ludicrous, but it's also horrible, and unacceptably so. Unacceptably so. <laughs> it's not anywhere close to good enough. It's not a game you tie little kids into chairs and say, I'm going to program you now, and feel good about that. So just the obnoxious of these characters, like I say, it's bad enough that somebody would have some philosophy where they glibly just tell other people what their pain is worth. Well, your pain isn't worth anything. You know, what, you, you, I don't care whether you spend 10 years in prison or 10 years in a mental hospital. I don't care what horror happens to you. Um, I'm just going to negate it and say what I'm doing is so cool, it's worth it. I mean, it's just something overtly obnoxious in that. But to do it in a way where you're also saying, yes, and I'll create life. I have no particular skills, I don't know particularly what the hell I'm doing, but I'm going to be programming this little thing, you know, and that's what it is, it's just going to be programming, you're going to make that person, um, and you don't, you, you know, there's no way this guy knows what he's doing, he doesn't have any statistical evidence demonstrating that, oh yes, well I'm going to do this maneuver, and this maneuver, and this maneuver, and if you do those three things to a kid, the kid will pop out okay, all balanced and everything. It'll just hop into the world and go, where can I hop next? It'll just be a little hopping machine. Uh, does he have any evidence of this? No. Uh, any reason to believe? No. But again, it's and is it ludicrous? Yes. <laughs> so let's, but let's just ignore the fact that uh, the harm will be real if realized. If the mistake is made, it's going to be realized in real harm, real suffering. Uh, for what function? For what purpose? Oh, to satisfy s some glibites' silly notion in their silly programming. They have some silly program running. I mean, it is just silly. There's no God. There is evolution. Uh, I am just pretty much a, an asshole. Then I'll go ahead and make some more. Uh, I'll go ahead and create some more opportunity for disaster. I'll build some more trains so they can wreck. <sighs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, but this word glib, 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 this is the real, yeah, you, you know, you used to think that uh, there was some other thing you know, that was the, the real evil in evil. But no, glib is the real evil. I mean, if you're not going to account for the price paid, Okay, if you're not going to acknowledge the negative, um, just step right over it. Yeah, that's just such, that's the bullshit move that creates all bullshit. I mean, that's what you really need to be, to be a real big asshole, you know, is to just glibly turn something into a statistic, turn something into a, well, they just didn't pull their boots up high enough. <laughs> you know, they're not, they didn't do enough bootstrapping, you know. I mean, I'm sure the rich do that every day as they just glibly step over all the misery in the world they could fix, you know, with a tiny fraction of what they waste every day on 
absolute bullshit. And uh, that little glib capacity is just... Uh, they, they're, no, they're not wearing their boots high enough. I don't think I should help them at all. <laughs> yeah, they didn't help themselves by pulling their boots up higher. They didn't even have boots, of course. But, you know, whatever. Uh, it's just uh, an amazingly putrid... Uh, so anyway, I mean, that's what glib will get you. It's putri putrification. It's, it's a, it, the world is a putrefied cesspool of pointless adventurism. You know, that's another fancy word, right? In, I'm having an adventure. So that's all you have to do is you could just call it an adventure. It doesn't matter whether you killed millions of people. You know, you could be on a homicidal adventure. Yes, it's all an adventure. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter, um, you know, how many one-legged kids it creates or any of this other shit. Who cares? Um, it's all for the adventure. Isn't the adventure splendid? Because I'm horny for it. That's it. I have a program that says, "Me hungry for adventure." Therefore, adventure is good. That's the and that's 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 philosophy. <laughs> yeah. And so this guy's going to critique philosophers with that, with with the philosophy of um, I'm on an adventure, and that's all I need to. I, that's the answer to every fucking problem. I'm on an adventure. Shut up. <laughs> Quit complaining. I'm adventuring. <laughs> I mean, it's just so pathetic. It's it's like, yeah, don't bother me while I'm eating. That's all he's it just he's, that's all he's doing. He's just saying, don't bother me while I'm eating. Don't bother me with that reality shit. Yeah, I'm eating. Um, so I'm feeding, and that's what it is. It's a it's, it's a planet of feeding things, programmed feeding things. That's all you are. That's all being is. Consciousness is being wasted. <laughs> Okay, floating around on feeding machines, on just glorified bugs. I mean, take away your consciousness. You know, isolate your consciousness from your body. What is your body? It's an insect without your consciousness. That's all it is. It's a bug. It's a need machine. And it just gobbles crap from the world. <clears throat> and all your consciousness right now is being used for is to help you be a better gobbler. And if you are using your brain to actually think about what it is to be a programmed gobbling bug, then you're probably like me saying, oh shit, <laughs> am I ever on the wrong planet? Oh damn it, um, this is bad, yeah. Um, the crazy fucks are running the asylum. But, you know, there's nothing else that the prisoners are running the prison. I mean, there's, it's, you're living in, gee, just the worst kind of failure as a world because the people who have the power are the people who have no uh, clue how to use it. No clue um, to any kind of, point us in the right direction, please. The driver of the bus, yeah, is the least competent rather than most competent. Um, and you can certainly see that about cultures, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I mean, every culture is being run by the, the refuse, the poor, the shittiest, the stupidest. They're always dictating the agenda, always creating the problem that no one ever solves because they have this right to adventurism. They have a right to make a mess. And, <laughs> you know, and you, you have the right to ignore the mess unless you have a conscience, unless you have a brain capable of recognizing it, and then you're going to have to do something about it, or try to do something about it. But the crazies aren't going to let you. <laughs> yeah, the crazies are going to try to stop you um, from um, seeding the machines with a better program. You know, like in the old days, like in the old Star or the, the old uh, Lost in Space or something. Remember, the robot always had a little tape. You had to put a new tape in. You know? <laughs> you know? So, yeah, we're trying to retape these machines um, with a little bit of humility, a little recognition that this game is way out of your control. And you have no business barely playing it yourself in any kind of hard, adventurous way because every move you make is dangerous as fuck. 
not just for yourself, but obviously for the things you're fucking with, uh, and then uh, to, to obnoxiously and arrogantly say, I will produce more, I will create more potential for problem, I will make more chaos to make the mess even harder to control. It's just so obnoxious. It's just like it's like pouring greenhouse gases out of a pitcher and just pouring them and just saying, I'll see if I can make the problem even worse. It's, it's, a, it's a, an act of volition. Why? Because the pitcher says adventure. I want the adventure of dipping the, the, the oil into the stream. You want, you want the adventure of pouring the dioxin into the frickin' Great Lakes or something? What the fuck? You know, there's, there's just absolutely nothing. You're just so, such a selfish fuck that for the, the mere pleasure of tipping a pitcher, you know, you'll cause all kinds of, you know, mayhem. You'll add to uh, horrific problems. You'll do nothing to contribute to anything that might make this more controllable. <sighs> Not that, you know, more control just means less harmful. But frankly, there is no good game to play. It's a need game all the way down. That's all this DNA thing does. It makes monsters. It doesn't make great things. It makes feeding machines that compete glibly. <laughs> you okay? Usually in ignorance. See, that's the difference between human monsters and the animal monsters. The animal monster program doesn't include any knowledge. So they're not allowed to, they can't do the realization, okay, that they're, in, that, that they're brutally insensitive. They don't realize how, that they're insensitive. They don't know what it is. They don't understand uh, that the consciousness exists in the other entities. We have that knowledge. And then these people use glib to just wipe it out of their minds, wipe it out, erase it, censor it out of the truth. Uh, so they can pretend there's a game worth playing just because they're so horny to rationalize an excuse to satisfy just selfish, petty, simple desires. And then they'll talk about how they're enlightened and they're reaching some tantriesque pinnacle of fucking, <laughs> you know, of, of some, some pinnacle of uh, what, uh, what I, I can't even figure a word for what you would call it, of psychotic um, insensitivity is all it is. It's just a it's, a, it's a way of getting yourself liberated from reality altogether um, and just being the baddest bug you can be. And that's all there is. There's nothing else. Be the stupidest part of yourself. Actualize the dumbest parts of yourself entirely, and give no mind to that mind. You know, don't realize it, that it can tell you, it can tell right from wrong, um, it can understand uh, signs that say keep out, danger, it can understand the word danger written on a sign, and that that word probably means something, <laughs> you know, radiation, it means something. It's not a nothing concept. It's not a ludicrous term, danger. So, but what else is there to say? You know, it really, this is the kind of thing, you know, it's, it's, you can, there's a million great quotes. I mean, there's all, you know, Schopenhauer had some, and this Koran guy, he's got a ton of nice, dark, dank, <laughs> dismal quotes about just how silly a little monster you are. And they will just cliche on top of them with some, but what about the silver lining? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, no sale. Um, again, and the thing that makes it just obvious, like I say, you just look into the world. You just see how the game is played. What's the native condition for the organism? And there's there's just this insidious use the thing up. You're just a test. You're a demonstration model. None of us are the real deal. We're none of us are the finished product. It just nature just keeps creating demon de, you know de, demonstration models to destroy in a demolition derby. 
and that's all that's taking place. We're being tested in a derm demolition derby to decide whether a little bit of DNA code should be the kind, you know, that, whether we should write it in ink or not. You know, right now I'm just written in pencil, you know, so, and I don't get written in ink until I survive the test and, uh, you know, pop out a, a, a copy of myself. Um, but, and this we're supposed to think. A rational person is supposed to say, yeah, this is a great game to play. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll strap my grandmother in that chair. <laughs> I'll strap my kids into that chair. I'll strap my, and my family, my sister and my brother into that chair. I mean, it's insidious. You're monsters. You're disgusting. Fucking self-obsessed scheming silly bugs as if you just did a little tiny bit of thinking about what life is what a, a gnarly little bit of mess it is um, and that it ends in what was that all for <laughs> why did I bother if I was just gonna get old and die anyway why bother uh, it all gets forgotten in your own mind and, uh, and it's forgotten in everybody else's mind and, and all it was was nothing and you're just sitting in a sitting with a little pile of rocks on top of a spot on the ground <laughs> that says pretty much loser um, and that's the fate how many rocks you wasted on top of your dead body probably will define how big a loser you are so that's the irony of it the smaller the stone probably the the less of a loser you were. So at least you didn't waste rocks on dead people. <sighs> yeah. Um, so, anyway. So, yeah, just be a war of cliches, though. Just little triteisms um, to um, deflect reality. And uh, for most of these people, it's the quantum triteism or some other kind of escape hatch. You know, we don't know anything. We can't figure it out. No, no. The story's written in blood, <laughs> you know, for 4 billion years, 500 million years of animals screaming, you know, as the writing takes place. And uh, there's just no doubt about what this is. And it's not something to... Um, glibly call ludicrous and leave it at that. It's more than ludicrous. It's horribly wasteful. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's, hard. it's a horrible waste. That should be in the... That, that, there, there should be a movie, a horror movie, called Waste. Waste should be one of the scariest words in the language. Waste should... Waste, uh, conceptually. Waste is logic's that's if, if you had a real logical vocabulary, waste would be the word that you're looking for. Waste. That's the big one. <laughs> yeah. That is the generic uh, element, the ingredient in all bad is waste. <sighs> So waste not, want not. <laughs> yeah, don't do either one of those things. I know it's supposed to mean something else, but I'm just saying. Don't waste. Don't want, and it's even better. I mean, don't, there's no chance of wasting. Because waste always comes out of your stupid, silly want. Yeah, okay. That's probably enough of my own. It's just this, you know, the nature of... of this simple program. It's not a complex program, right? It's just not. I mean, it's this idea of me saying to myself, I would not want to live that life. I would not want to live that life. I would not want to... All I have to do is point to a few of those that I don't want to live. And if they're on the dice, why would I roll the dice? You, you get me? And, and can't you see that the, the lives you want to live out there, that most of those lives you really don't want to live because, oh yeah, to be that guy you have to have syphilis, and to be that guy you have to get herpes, and to be that guy you got this, and to be that guy you, you know, you, you know, all the other crap that went with that bullshit life. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want it at the price. 
right? <clears throat> no. Uh, of the rest of their bullshit. So even if they have one thing you like, long hair, um, they have something you don't like. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to use me as an example, right? No, fuck that. I should use somebody else as an example. Uh, but anyway, you know, I'm charming all the way down. Mostly. Um, but anyway, you get my point. You should be able to get the point. Like I said, this is just so fucking simple. Evolution makes bugs. We, okay, for our own convenience, for our own ego gratification, have decided to separate ourselves and say, we're not bugs. We're mammals. And then we're homo sapiens, sapiens, or something. Um, you know, to distinguish ourselves. Uh, you know, to make a distinction. But we're doing the same thing. It's the same basic mechanism, isn't it? Mouth, eyes. Eyes better to find you with so I can shove you in my mouth so I, uh, you can go through my frickin' digestive tract and come out poo. I mean, isn't that all everything is doing? Consuming and reproducing. Why? Because they're addicted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't have to throw in cannibalism. Um, but yes, it, even that, even that little simple ma metaphor, even the little simple knowledge of saying, "Would you invent an island, right?" And then knowingly put organisms on it, and you knew they were going to evolve into eating each other, but there was nothing else on the island. So they would just evolve into eating each other, into chasing each other down and eating each other. You just say, yes, that's a good idea. Let's go make one of those. What logic, what, what would motivate that but some insane desire to rationalize, to make excuses for your existence? Nothing else. Now, that's probably enough. I didn't quite do what I wanted to do with this, but so anyway, he let's see how he slanders another dead guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, calls him a coward. Uh, Koran, I think, actually admitted he was a bit of a coward. I, you know, he actually, you know, I think he was like, yeah, I should have killed myself when I was five, um, and I should have done it again when I was thirteen. I should have done it again when I was twenty-one. And I should have done it again when I was thirty-two. Um, and he just admits that you know, once you're an addict, it's it's hard not to um, keep breathing. I think that's even how he would have said it. You just, you keep breathing. It's just, this mechanism just makes you do it. Uh, the body uh, resists logic in every way. So anyway, that's probably enough. Uh, let's see what the cat's doing. Stealing shit. It's a little scheming mind. Anyway, until next time.